Let's test the power of Pirate King, Dark King and the Hero of Marine. It's official, I love Pirate Warrior series. This is not even a sponsored video, I'm doing this because I have been in love with this series since I was a child. Dynasty Warriors and the Samurai Warriors made my childhood. And the idea of you being a one-man army against waves of enemy was always amusing to me. One Piece was just so right for this type of game. But for the last 9 years, I was eager to see Roger, Dragon and Rayleigh in this game. And now, two-thirds of that dream came true. In the new DLC, we got Roger, Rayleigh and Gar. And in this video, let's talk about them. First thing first, let's talk about Prime version of Dark King Rayleigh. I always assumed that he and Shanks gonna have the same type of fight style because I believe he is more of a teacher to Shanks than even Roger. And just like Shanks, he have some unimaginable speed skills in this game. To the point that when he is attacking sometimes, you cannot even see him. The game was focused to show us how immensely great is the observation hockey of Dark King Rayleigh. How he dodges with grace and attacks surgically. Unlike Roger and Garp, who are, let's face it, more broken than him in the canon and also in the game, he belongs to the technical group of fighters and not the brute force type. Which means he can move unrealistically in the map, killing waves after waves. And honestly, this is just so loyal to the Rayleigh that I know from the manga. As far as we know, Rayleigh wasn't born with a godly amount of conquerors hockey with him. He is not a titan with a lot of brute physical force. And he doesn't even have a famous glorious blade to just help him kill his enemies. When I look at Rayleigh, I see a teacher, a master of hockey. A person that might have a weaker raw amount of hockey compared to his captain Roger, but he know how to use that power. What makes Rayleigh deadly in this game is I presume what makes Rayleigh deadly in the actual canon of manga. And that's his mind more than his muscle, that he knows how to attack and where to hit. He fight with efficiency and he fight brutally. But if I have to rank him among all the characters in the game, I'm probably gonna go between top 15 to top 10. The reason obviously is that the game is loaded with great fighters and we never even see Prime Dark King really do anything in Among Us. So the game runners actually did us a favor because if we want to talk realistically, they didn't have anything to go around when building Rayleigh. Overall, I am not that much disappointed with Rayleigh and I know in the next versions of the game or Pirate Warrior 5 when we hopefully have more feats from Dark King Rayleigh, he's gonna make it to the top 10 strongest character playable. But I am disappointed with Gar. Not to the any fault of his own, but because number 1 and number 2 strongest characters in this game are Roger and Whitebeard. I genuinely also wanted him to be top 3. And the grief is that he could have been on top 3 if he was always just like Roger on the hockey mode. But no, like 60% of the time that we are playing with Garp, he's not using hockey and it is actually boring to fight with him. But for the time that he has awakening hockey all around of his body, just like Shanks and Roger, he is a god. Also, who decided that the final attack of Prime Garb should be throwing a ball? We actually saw Galaxy Impact in the story. I mean, we really need to wait for another version of Garb to shoot people with the godly Galaxy Impact? I don't know, perhaps they didn't show it to us because the anime only haven't watched it yet. A single hockey-fused punch of Garb can clear the waves of enemy and he is much stronger compared to Pirate Warrior 3. Garb is more efficient than Rayleigh to take down strong enemies. But he doesn't have a lot of strong attacks that can hit the enemy from far away in the normal form. Right now, I would say that Garp is barely making it to the top 10 strongest character in Pirate Warrior 4. But he could have been top 5 if we just like Roger had him always on the hockey mod. 
Come to think of it, even after the recent events in manga, Garp is yet to show us any real attacks in his prime. So just like Rayleigh, I cannot wait for them to give some real attacks and real broken godlike capabilities to Garp in the next versions of this game. Also before talking about Roger, let's just say that they did an absolutely smashing job with Gear 5 Luffy. I'm not sure if Gear 5 Luffy is the best character, but he is the most fun character to play with in these games. They brought the sense of freedom and the fighter style of Song God Nika into a game. So no, I'm not done reviewing these games because they deserve a top 10 strongest list. The game runners already said that they want to make Roger, the Pirate King, the strongest character in their game. I mean, characters like Whitebeard, Big Mom and Kaido are not far below her and they are relatively the strongest character after Roger, but the distinguish is very clear by 10%. Just like Shanks, every single attack of this character is fused with Hockey, and in fact, Hockey is just oozing out of his physical form. He can hit characters from far, far away without any advantage of Devil Fruit. This is something that Whitebeard previously done the best, but now, with his Conqueror's Hockey, Roger is doing it very fast and very deadly. I mean, his basic first strong attack is very chargeable and with that alone you can clear the map. Film Red Shanks doesn't have a Kamusari for some unknown reason, but Goldie Roger has it. And let me tell you, this attack might clearly be one of the strongest in the game. Roger being the strongest character is not a surprise, especially because Zebek is not part of the game, but I've been waiting to play for this character for 9 years. And the dialogues of this character is just so amazing. Roger is just so bored that nobody can give him a real challenge. Unlike Garp who cannot perform very greatly on the air, Roger is just as deadly in the air as he is in the land. He's not particularly a very fast type of fighter and he cannot move very quickly, but really he doesn't need to be fast. All of his attacks are chargeable and he can bring literal storms of hockey upon his enemies. And that's it, this is my basic short review of the three new DLC legendary era characters of Pirate Warrior 4. I am endlessly grateful that they didn't wait to give us this extra addition to Pirate Warrior 5 and we had that here now. And I wonder now that Gorosei showed their actual power and Pirate Warrior 5 is not coming anytime soon, we're gonna have Gorosei as playable which that would be a great idea, somebody please send it to them. But all in all, even if we don't receive any new addition to Pirate Warrior 4 and we actually have to wait that long, I'm happy! Also, I'm gonna make a top 10 strongest characters in the Pirate Warrior game very soon, so stay tuned for that. And I see you all beautiful people at Laugh Tale.